Pitch King James Bible, the real Bible. The King James Bible is the real Bible. This is the Bible that God's hand was on, that he has preserved. This book, the Word of God, went through a purification process, a seven-step, you could say, purification process. The text that underlines this book comes from Antioch. That is, what is it, Acts chapter 11, verse 26, where we were called Christians first in Antioch. If I have that wrong, one of you brethren, please correct me. The um, other Bibles, the uh, Roman Catholic Bibles, their manuscripts that they are based off of, loosely so-called, stem from Alexandria, Egypt. And Egypt, if you know anything of occultism, is where a lot of the pagan mythologies that has in, been incorporated into the Roman Catholic Church abide. And the manuscripts, the oldest and best, is a lie. The oldest and best. Vaticanus and Sinaiticus. They're the oldest because no one used them because they were trash, pretty much. And there's a lot of evidence that suggests that Sinaiticus is a forgery. No, this is the real book, the King James Bible. This is what God's hand was on, is on, and has preserved it for us. Okay? This is the book. This is the real Bible. Okay, I have several videos addressing that. All right? Don't ever fall for the oldest and best manuscript. You know what that is? That's Genesis chapter 3, Yea hath God said. And the proponents of that today are the Roman Catholic Church, the Jesuit order, okay, with their textual criticism. If someone is telling you to seek the oldest and best, they are lying to you, okay? Or the originals. There are no originals, okay? The original manuscripts. Uh, they ain't one original copy of Isaiah, of Moses, of uh, the Psalms, of Matteo, Matthew, none of that, okay? You want what God truly said? It's this book, the King James Bible, the real Bible, okay? Check out my videos about uh, addressing the King James Bible, okay? Please. Now, get a King James Bible. If you are not using God's perfect and errant, given by inspiration word, this isn't going to work for you. Okay? This is a spiritual book. And you need the Spirit of God to truly understand it. Lost people, there is things within this book that lost people can understand. Yes. But to truly Come to know the Lord Jesus Christ, our Father. You need this book. You need this book. Okay? So get a King James Bible and turn in the King James Bible to the book of Jeremiah. Okay? Um, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, okay? Open up in the Psalms and turn your pages that way, okay? Go to the scriptures that we are briefly going to be looking at this morning. Don't just sit there on your duff. Get the book, okay? It's very important to do that. Turn in the King James Bible to Jeremiah chapter 25. Follow me along. Quit playing games. Okay? Jeremiah chapter 25. We are going to be reading, we are going to be reading verses 1 on to verse 7 in Jeremiah chapter 25. Go there. Jeremiah chapter 25, beginning at verse 1 on to verse 7. Now, dispensationally, 
A dispensation is where God dispenses different modes of salvation within the dispensations. You will hear people say that it is faith alone from the, from Genesis to Revelation. That's a lie. Okay, Dispensationally, this is written for the Jews. Okay? And doctrinally, this is for the Jews. Okay? This is instruction in righteousness because our doctrine today is found within the Pauline epistles. It is to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Okay? But, let's read. Jeremiah 25, verses 1 and verse 7. Go there. The word that came to Jeremiah concerning all the people of Judah. Right there. In the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah. That was the first year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. The which Jeremiah the prophet spake unto all the people of Judah and to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, from the thirteenth year of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, even unto this day, that is the three and twentieth year, the word of the Lord hath come unto me, and I have spoken unto you, rising early and speaking, but ye have not hearkened. But ye have not hearkened. And the Lord hath sent unto you all his servants, the prophets rising early and sending them, but ye have not hearkened nor inclined your ear. They said, Turn ye again now, every one from his evil way, the they he's referring to the prophets. They said, Turn ye again now, every one from his evil way and from the evil of your doings. And dwell in the land that the Lord hath given unto you and to your fathers forever and ever. Are you following me along in the book? Are you looking at verse 6? Are you looking at verse 6? You don't understand the danger you're in if you reject this book. You truly do not. And who's going to tell you that? And go not after other gods, little g, to serve them and to worship them and to provoke me and provoke me not to anger with the works of your hands. And I will do you no and I will do you no hurt. Yet ye have not hearkened unto me, saith the Lord, that ye might provoke me to anger with the works of your hands to your own hurt. Matthew Matthew chapter twenty three. Matthew chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23, verses 37 on to verse 39. This is, these are the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father. Okay? God manifests in the flesh. One God comprised of spirit, soul, and body, the Lord Jesus Christ. Not God in three persons. That's nonsense. Matthew chapter 23, verses 37 on and verse 39. You, go there. Are you there? O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy, ch thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings? 
and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. For I say unto you, ye shall not see me henceforth, till ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Acts chapter 7. <clears throat> the book of Acts is right after the Gospel of John. Okay? Acts chapter 7 is very significant because in Acts chapter 7 is when the nation of Israel, as a nation, rejected the gospel, the, the kingdom of God. There's a difference between the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven is always a reference to the physical, actual kingdom in Jerusalem where Jesus Christ, when he comes back, is going to rule and reign from. The kingdom of God can mean the, uh, the actual physical uh, kingdom in Jerusalem, but more often than not, it is the spiritual kingdom. Okay? Spiritual. And in Acts chapter 7 is when the nation of Israel rejected that gospel. And then, well, we'll, we'll get to that, okay? But here's an admonition for you. Acts chapter 7, verses 51 on to verse 60. Okay? Now Stephen gives a rundown of the people of Israel, the Jew. And here's the rejection. Okay? And we as Gentiles, when we have the chance to witness unto the Jew, whether they be male or female. Here's your condemnation. Acts chapter 7, verses 51 on to verse 60. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. As your father did, as your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them, which shew before of the coming of the just one, of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. See, when you speak from this book, the King James Bible, the real Bible, that's going to happen to those of you who are lost. And more importantly, when a Gentile, by the Lord, is given the opportunity, a chance to witness onto a Jew, and you use this book like you're supposed to, it cuts you to the heart, doesn't it? It's supposed to. Verse 54 again, when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, Stephen, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet named, whose name was Saul, who would eventually become the Apostle Paul, the Apostle unto us Gentiles. Okay? And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God. They stoned Stephen while calling upon God. That's very important to note. They thought they were doing God's service. <laughs> Uh, you can reference that in, um, what is it, Matthew 24, I believe? Let's continue. Uh, if I misquote brethren, correct me in the comments, please. I'm accountable to you. Remember, let's go. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God. 
and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he, Stephen, kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. That's the true spirit of forgiveness. Stephen was being stoned, murdered by his own people. And he said, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And then you read in Acts chapter 8, the gospel now, the attention, now, you know, now they're going to the Gentiles. The Gentiles. Why is that? Romans chapter 11. Um, I have uh, a two-part video of replacement theology in my playlist concerning the Jewish people. Check that out. Romans chapter 11, okay? We have to remember this, and like I've said many times, there are a lot of brethren out there who have problems with this. But those who are truly saved, born again, King James Bible believing Christians, there's a difference here. Romans chapter 11, verse 11. I say then, have they, the Jews, stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. But rather through their fall salvation is come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. A lot of you brethren might have, I know a lot of you brethren struggle with that, but see, when the Lord gives you a chance to witness unto the Jews. Hi. You have to remember that. And you will see that jealousy. Oh, I've seen it. <laughs> oh, have I seen it. But see, we are to shoo them. Their God. Through God working through us. Because if you are truly saved and born again, the Lord Jesus Christ dwells within you because you are sealed until the day of redemption. Once saved, always saved. Okay? It's very important to note. We're going to come back to Romans, but go to Proverbs now, chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6. That Psalms, Brad. Proverbs chapter 6. This Bible has yet to be really worn in. Okay. Proverbs chapter 6, verses 9 unto verse 11. Okay. Psalms, Proverbs, or Proverbs. Okay. Psalm chapter 6, uh, excuse me. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 9 unto verse 11. <clears throat> How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? When wilt thou arise out of, out of thy sleep? Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of thy hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, and thy want as an armed man. Romans chapter 13, I know we were just there. I know we were just there. Go back to Romans chapter 13. Romans is right after the book of Acts, okay? And you probably figured that one out already. Romans chapter 13, verses 8 under verse 14 to close out that chapter. Okay? Romans chapter 13, verses 8 under verse 14. Owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Now, I'm going to put a link in this video for a salvation video, 
where in that video I begin, the Lord had me to begin at the Ten Commandments, which are not required for us for salvation today. Okay? The Ten Commandments were given to show the Jew, and also for us Gentiles eventually, that we cannot keep God's perfect law, that we need a Savior. No one could keep law, uh, God's laws perfectly. Only God himself. God the Father manifested in the flesh. God was manifest in the flesh, okay? Only he could do that. We can't. As it saith in the scriptures, uh, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us onto Christ. That's in the book of Galatians. Go find it. Seriously, go find it. Let's read. Verse 8 and Romans 13, on to verse 14. Owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Here are the commandments for us Christians today in the time of the Gentiles or the Christian dispensation. Okay? That is the dispensational difference here. Okay? Let's read. For this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, Thou shalt not bear false witness. Right there, thou shalt not bear false witness. If you're using a Roman Catholic Bible perversion, a majority of them take that out of there. Maybe because the fake Roman Catholic Bible perversions are bearing false witness. Uh, you don't believe me? Huh? The oldest and best? Huh? Okay, check out Romans 13, verse 9, on one of those like Bible Hub things, um, and see for yourself. Let's continue. Thou shalt not covet, and if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. And it's not this sappy, wishy-washy, sissy, bear hug stuff. No. Love is telling someone the truth. What do you think I'm doing to you right now? There ain't no one. I know it. There ain't no one around you who's going to tell you this. Why? Maybe because you have encircled yourself with people who will tickle your ears to tell you only what you want to hear. Let's continue. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Verse 11. And now, knowing the time, do you know the time? That now is a high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. A hint at the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. Like I said, I'm going to be putting a link in this video for the one older salvation video that the Lord had me to do. I have two of them. The one that you will see when you come to this channel when you are not signed in, okay? And this other one, okay? Which is where I start out in the Ten Commandments, okay? How long are you going to play around? See, when the body of Christ gets caught up, then he's going to shift and turn his attention back onto 
the Jewish people. And if you're Jewish, that time is for you to correct you and to bring you back unto your God. And we the Gentile were grafted into your tree to make you jealous. And I have prayed for you. And I have prayed for those uh, who are related to you. But see, there are those of you Jewish people who are seeking, but are looking in the totally wrong direction. As your fathers did, so do ye. This is a warning to you. This is a warning to you. Like those who are maybe related to you have been warned, but they right now have made their choice and are falling even more into their own wickedness and deceit. Yes, yes, their own wickedness and deceit. But there are some of you, sons and daughters of Israel, who are truly seeking, you better get right with your God. You, oh boy, you better repent. You, uh, you Jewish people need to take this book seriously. See, I understand that because of Roman Catholicism and the Jesuits, I understand that they have purposely made the faith that actually is to look abhorrent to you. And they, that is not Christian at all. You want to know your Lord, your Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ? Here, get the King James Bible, the real Bible. Read it. Ask him to show you things. Okay? Do you remember what I told you about the book of James? Like I said, no one around you is probably going to warn you of this because they don't love you enough to tell you the truth. Consider these things because, okay, now look at me, look at me. When we, the body of Christ, get taken out of the way, God is going to shift his attention back to your people. And if you are alive during this time, the Holocaust of your people is going to be nothing in comparison to what is coming. And in that time, you have to have keep the faith of Jesus and you cannot take that mark, which is, which here in America, everybody is being prepared for. At work yesterday, everyone was paying with, the, with their credit cards because cash is and true, uh, our fiat currency given to us by the Jesuits, the paper money is truly filthy. Yes, it is. That's true. Okay. But. Everyone's going to plastic now because they're afraid to touch the bills to, and because they might get the coronavirus, right? See, it's a conditioning. It's a conditioning. Getting people ready to go cashless, a cashless society, which will eventually lead into the mark of the beast, where no one might buy or sell save they that have the mark of the beast and the number of his name. And it will be in the right hand or in the forehead. And the people are being conditioned for it right now. Son, we're that close to being taken out of here. And it's up to you. It's up to you. Do you truly want to remain as your fathers were? Because you can get out of this before it's too late. Because I'm going to tell you something, boy. <laughs> and hey, see, I'm saved and born again. I'm not going to go through that time because we're getting caught up. If you don't get saved, you are not going to make it through that time.
and neither are those who are related to you. You need to wake up. You need to wake up before it's too late. Do you understand that? Huh? I hope you do. Because like I said, there's no one around you who's going to tell you this. Like I said, I'm going to be putting in the link in this video for you. Consider these things before it's too late. I gotta go.